All right, you guys, so this is uh, the restoration part 13, and I'm gonna try to take a little bit of a turn in this series. Uh, the past videos I've done, I have, uh, I think they were pretty good, but I would like to be a little bit more in depth so that people can really see what I'm doing. Because sometimes in the videos I'll say, you know, okay, I'm gonna go get Beach Bear's, uh, you know, legs welded or something. I'll say something like that. And then I won't actually show it, you know, I'll, I'll go get it done. And the, the main reason I do that is because, um, you know, I, I like to get things done as quickly as possible, um, and so I, I don't like to focus on camera angles and stuff like that, but I really, I do want you guys to get sort of the in-depth restoration. I think that, you know, in order to do that, I am gonna have to go a little bit slower, and I'll, I'll try to show you guys as much as possible. And uh, so today, uh, as I discussed previously, originally, whenever I aired Looney Bird up, his uh, Tolematic cylinder wasn't leaking, but um, now it is. So I have ordered, actually, three rebuild kits. I'm rebuilding three Looney Birds probably today. Um, and uh, it's gonna be my own, um, the six, one of the six, first six Looney Birds, and then I've got another Looney Bird that I'm also rebuilding. Um, so I'll, I'll go through the entire process of rebuilding at least one of those cylinders so that you guys can really understand in depth how those cylinders work and also how you can rebuild them. All right, so the first step of rebuilding a Tolematic cylinder, um, which you can see right here, is to um, unfasten it from Looney Bird's lift mechanism, so, or, you know, whatever lift mechanism, whether you're doing the sun or the moon. So um, you can see a bolt right here and a bolt right here, and then there's two down at the bottom, which you can't really see, and I'm just going to go ahead and remove those. Don't buy tools from Harbor Freight. There's certain stuff that you can buy, but, you know, like this... Uh, this wrench right here is, is really just low quality, so, but it'll work for what I'm doing. Yeah, you guys can see right there, it's just totally, just does not stick in there whatsoever. And I forgot one step, which is I need to cut the airlines. Um, as you guys can see right here, this is where these two bolts is where Looney Bird's lift mechanism actually fastens to the Tolematic cylinder. And uh, I probably should have taken this off first. It might be a little bit more difficult now, but have to get it off. So the next step, taking the Tolematic cylinder all the way off, as I said, probably should have done that uh, one step first, but that's fine, it worked out. So what I'm gonna do is uh, this threaded rod, I guess you could call it a threaded rod, is uh, it's got a, a little section of it that uh, a wrench fits on. And so you put a wrench right here and you put a wrench right here. This is a 9 16th bolt. And uh, so I'll put this adjustable wrench right here and I'll take my um, 9 16 wrench and I will just loosen this. This is I've already loosened it quite a bit, but just to give you guys the idea, um, it'd probably be better if I wasn't using an adjustable wrench for this, but I, for whatever reason, can't find the size that I need. So that comes off. I don't know if this is one of those, uh, what do you call them, nylon nuts? I think it is, but uh, it's one of those ones that does not come off super easily. So that's a castle nut, maybe? So I'm actually trying to remember the last time I took one of these apart. I don't know if I unscrewed this top block or if I, there's actually a little spot with a uh, retaining ring. I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to remove first. I guess we'll, we'll just have to see. Okay, so I think that was correct. I remember that last time, but in order to actually get, in order to get this part off, get it through the 
pull on there. I'm going to have to use the snap or the retaining ring pliers I have. So one of the difficult areas. So we'll see, I need to squeeze that in. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get video of this, but probably better for me to just try and get it. All right, so after a little while of uh, trying to use these snap ring pliers, I realized that they are, the tips are too large, so luckily was able to get another set and I uh, was finally able to get that, that little retaining ring off. All right, so uh, I sort of mentioned to you guys that you know, these telematic cylinders aren't actually built that differently from a uh, standard air cylinder. And so here I'll show you. So this is just like a normal, you know, cylinder housing. And, and once you pull it out, you can see that just like a, you know, Chicago air cylinder or whatever, it's got the two U-cup um, two U -cup seals right here. And, you know, it just operates just like a normal air cylinder. It goes back and forth. But, it, you know, what makes it different? is that it's got this, you know, cable attached to it, so, yeah. All right, so I started to rebuild the cylinder, and uh, one of the things I noticed was uh, whenever I pressed this plastic piece out after I got that retaining ring out, was uh, this is not the same model cylinder as what I'm used to and what I ordered uh, repair kits for. Um, and so I was thinking, well, maybe uh, originally, in the early days, they used a different model of telematic cylinder, but then I checked... Of course, I have one of the first six Looney Birds, and that one also had a standard, or at least what I would call a standard telematic cylinder. It, it's nothing like this, so this may have just been a one-off, maybe. Uh, I mean, the show was in Minneapolis, and telematic is in Minneapolis, so maybe they just ordered a, a new cylinder straight from telematic, and it just happened to be a different model. But basically, what that means is that um, I can't use the uh, repair kit on this cylinder. Well, I can, and what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to, uh, I've got an extra tall neck cylinder, so what I'll do is I'll take the head off this, and then I will replace this with a standard, or what I call a standard tallmatic um, cylinder head uh, that isn't like this, so I can use the repair kit. Try and give you guys a better look. If I can get this focus on uh, the retaining ring of how I get these out. So. I was struggling a little bit in the beginning whenever I was getting these out because I was using the wrong size retaining ring pliers, but now I have my proper size ones, so I can just hopefully get this out. I'm using these uh, paper towels just as cushions so that it doesn't scratch the plastic. Okay, that's turning. Now, um, the, the rebuild kit comes with enough O-rings to rebuild uh, these two uh, U-cups. And, uh, you know, as I recommend in my other videos, you know, if you're going to rebuild something, you might as well rebuild everything. So I wouldn't recommend, you know, not replacing the, you know, U-cups just because those aren't bad yet. You know, you don't, opening up these cylinders isn't very fun. It'll probably get easier over time, but, you know, it's still, if you can save yourself on some, some time, you know, that's always a good thing. And then the next step is to 
loosen this. And I guess I need to be fastened on to the part that is not the plastic. I need to be fastened onto this metal section right here. That fastened, hopefully, this will loosen. Okay, it did. So as you guys can see, this is the piece that I was trying to uh, get those two threaded rods disconnected from. And uh, yeah, so I used a paper towel just to prevent it from getting marred by the threads. All right, so after disassembling both the cylinders, went ahead and stored all the other stuff away. Stored the, uh, the longer cylinder that I used as, a, I guess, a, a sacrificial cylinder for this project. Stored that somewhere else. And then I've got the, the two heads for this cylinder now and uh, that are the right size that are gonna work for this rebuild kit. And so now I'm gonna show you guys how to rebuild it. So the first step is we're just gonna open up this Telematic rebuild kit. You can't actually order these direct from Telematic. You have to find a distributor. And basically it comes with a new, totally new cable assembly and also O-rings. So. See that right there. So one of the things you'll also want to do is you'll want to clean the cylinder, probably clean the inside, and uh, also uh, clean the, the heads more than likely. You know, just get get them looking nice, get the dust off of them, make sure there's no you know metal particles or anything inside the, uh, the air cylinder body, and. Um, you're also going to want to re-lubricate that. Make sure that you lubricate the inside because that's really going to help um, keep the O-rings um, in good shape for a long time. And uh, so I have done that. I cleaned the inside and I am now going to go ahead and show you guys how you reassemble this. So basically you have, I think, you guys will probably remember how this was assembled. You have that center piece, that center metal piece, and then you have these two plastic pieces on the side, and the U-cup O-rings fit in between there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take out these O-rings. So we got a couple extra ones that I don't recognize because I haven't rebuilt this in so long. So, oh, I guess so we have some replacement O-rings for here, so I will replace those. I'm not sure where, I think these go there. Yeah, they do, okay. So, so the first step is I've got a little dental pick. You wanna make sure, you might actually wanna get a plastic dental pick. I don't even know if they sell those, but, because I, I feel like it would just be too weak, but you know, you're gonna, get under this o-ring and pull it out. It doesn't matter if you cut this o-ring because of course we're not going to be using this anymore. So, But you don't want to damage the plastic. So, so those are trash. We've got the two. I'm going to give these a little quick clean. Got these two new U cups. I'm just going to clean everything off. Uh, normally, what I do, put this in some hot soapy water, and then I make sure, make sure you do this because soap can be, you know, it can help degrade O rings. So, you want to make sure if you put any soap on these or degrease or anything, you want to make sure you wash that off with clean water afterwards. Um, even with aluminum pieces, even if I'm just cleaning these, you, you want to make sure to get the degreaser off because it can be corrosive to metal, it can be corrosive to o-rings as well all right so i cleaned those up a bit and now we're going to go ahead and re-lubricate 
the O-rings. So I'm just going to take the O-ring. And I'm, I use a lot of lubricant for these just because, I mean, too much lubricant can be a problem if you use, like, way, way too much. But, uh, you know, I like to use quite a bit and get these nice and uh, well lubricated. Because frequently, whenever I'll rebuild air cylinders, they'll be totally dry on the inside. And uh, we, we don't want that. So the way the O-rings face, you want to face them this way. You can see kind of the lip is on the end of this. And uh, I've got enough grease that I can probably just lubricate that. And then you guys can see I have that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that end. You can choose whichever end. It doesn't matter. And we're going to thread this in. And then you can see I threaded it through there, and now I'm going to connect this center O-ring holder. And I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this in the vise, and I'm really gonna tighten this. Make sure that this is a good connection because we don't want this coming loose inside the cylinder. One of the things I just realized is before you put this plastic piece on, or screw it in, you need to uh, thread, or not thread this, but you need to put this uh, new little plastic cap through the, uh, the pulley assembly. Take this side through. You wanna make sure you have the right, the right side of the O-ring, you don't want this to be. And so that's just going to go and that's going to fit down into that hole and then I'll put the retaining ring in after. But, uh, so yeah, then this, of course. Yeah, so now I can put that plastic piece on. Okay, so I've got this one side tightened on now, and now we're going to move on to the other side. But what you're gonna wanna do first, you wanna make sure you don't put the other side on yet, because you're gonna have to run this through the main body. And you can't really just put the, you can't really just put, you know, this in here because of the way the U-cup O-ring is facing. So what you're gonna have to do is, uh, in order to get that, you know, you can see how it kind of flares out in order to get that kind of compressed, what you're gonna have to do, you're gonna have to use um, some thin metal sheeting and wrap it around, and I'll show you guys how I do that. So here I've got some thin metal, and uh, we are going to use this to get those O-rings in there. You are going to cut the metal just enough so that it just wraps around the, the O-rings. You wanna make sure it's not too much, because otherwise it, it won't fit. This is really a, a small clearance. And so you have to be pretty careful with this. All right, so I've got the shim in. That was the term that I was looking for. Have the shim. You might want to lubricate the shim a little bit. I think these might be lubricated enough that I can just get it in there, but we shall see. I think I might just cut a little bit off the shim. It's a little bit too... So I had to do some work off camera, but I got this pressed in, and then uh, now I'll be able to do the other side. All right, so I have it coming out the other end now. So, of course, the next step is to do the same thing that we did on the other side, which is I'm going to take, I'm going to take this, make sure that you've got the right side going in. You don't want this side to go in because it's not going to fit into the hole, so... Going to stick this through there. And then that's also going to fit in there, and then I'll put the retaining ring in there. Just realized I actually can't do that, so I'm going to take, I have to take this off again. And I'm going to insert that in, make 
sure it's lubricated, of course. Make sure it doesn't have any little spots that are sticking out. And then that's done, and then I'm gonna have to take the other side off again. Now I will retighten this, and then we'll do it finally. All right, so I have everything assembled now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this cable assembly tight. All right, so now comes the reinstallation of the cylinder. 